Now we continue by looking at how to document the black box tests. Now the goal here is to go from these sketches that were developed in the previous lecture to actual test cases. With good documentation, testing becomes more easier as it is easier, easier to follow what you are testing and also the maintenance of the test cases is easier. From the sketches, we start to develop a condition table. So here we have the month of the date field and we document it uh, to a table in this fashion. So we had the valid from 1 to 12 and we had the boundaries 0, 1 and 12 to 13. So we have four, we have four rows in the table. So the first one is invalid on the boundary 0 and 1. And this basically means that the input value would be 1. So the next is a valid class from the boundary 0 to 1. So the value is 1. And this is for the month field. And the next one is the valid case from 12 to 13. So the value would be 12. And then we have the invalid from the boundary of 12 to 13. So the value is 13. So we continue with the day value. And the, and the first test case is very similar to the month. So we are considering the case of 0 and 1, like we did for the month. Uh, so we have the both, the valid and the invalid uh, test case for the 0 and 1 boundary. So we try to enter the value 1 and we try to enter the value, uh, we try to enter the value 0 and we try to enter the value of 1. So now we continue and we need more test cases to cover uh, the month, uh, the day, because there is different endings to the, to the month. So at the end of the month, the, we can have 31 days, 30 days, uh, 28 days or 29 days. And this is different to the, to the month. Well, you know, a year can only have 12 months. So we, we can cover this with four different cases. But, but due to the different endings of the month, we need uh, more cases here in the end. So we need to cover the 31 and 32, uh, the valid and the invalid. So trying both 31 and 32. And obviously we need to do this for the 30, 31 day month. Otherwise this makes no sense. Then we need to cover the 30 day month or the boundary of 30 and 31. So both, you know, valid for the 30 day month would be 30 and invalid would be 31 days for that month. And the same for the 28 day month and the 29 day month. So now you can notice that also the restriction field um, starts to become handy when the, when the test results of the, of the day field changes based on, on the different months. So we also need to document this restriction here. Now we continue with the year. As you can remember, the exploratory part of our testing where we tried to figure out the boundary was a bit inconclusive. So we determined that the valid range is from 0 to uh, 2100. Uh, but then we also determined that 10,000 was not OK. So basically the range from 2100 to 10,000 is unexplored. Uh, anyway, we're going to use these as the boundaries. So we have my, so we have for the zero, we have from minus one to zero. So that's that's the first boundary, and then we have from 20, 2100 to ten thousand um, as the second boundary that we will test. And now this is documented here uh, to a similar fashion as we did with the months. So we test, you know, the boundary of minus one and zero for the invalid value, which is minus one, and then for the valid value, which is zero. And then we do the same for the uh, 2100, 10,000. So the valid is uh, 2100 and the invalid is then 10,000. So what is a good strategy for developing test cases out of this? 
one very straightforward solution would be just take each row and call it a test case. So in this case, we would have 18 different uh, test cases because we have 18 rows in here. And there is nothing wrong with this approach. Uh, however, it is possible to be, to be a bit more efficient. So we can have less test cases and still cover all of these tags here. So the purpose of these tags is actually to, to follow coverage in the test cases. Um, so now we just start to develop the test cases. So we have the first test case. We just gave it a number. And now we document what tags have we covered. So let's first look at the values, however. So we have the, the first day of a month. So uh, it matches this, this line here as the day is one. So we cover D1 and we mark it to the table. We also have the first uh, month of the year, which covers tag and M2. So we also mark that. And then we have the year zero, uh, which covers this line over here. And we also mark that to the table. And, <coughs> and the zero is here. And now the expected result is that this should work OK. Uh, for the next case, we go to the values M3, D3 and Y3. So we pick the last day of the month, last uh, month of the year, and we take the upper boundary, the valid upper boundary of that, that is guaranteed to be working, uh, which is 1200. And now we can cover uh, three additional tags from this list. Okay, so far so good. With two test cases, we have already covered six different tags. So it's clear that we we can uh, we can do without twelve. Uh, excuse me, without eighteen test cases, we can have a little bit less. But now it gets a bit more complicated. So after this, we can basically only cover one additional tag with each new test case. So in test case three. Uh, we go for the tag D5. So the valid side of the boundary of a 30 day month. And April is a 30 day month. So this can this be set to four. And this is a star indicating that any valid value will do. So basically anything from the range of uh, 2100 to zero is okay here. So next one we go for the for the February or excuse me we go for the 28 day valid value to this line here so we are going for the tag d7 uh, entering the value 28 uh, and this has to be February and this also has to be February from a non-leap year so 2012 doesn't do we have to do 2019 and now we go finally for the tag D9, which is the leap year and 2020 was a leap year. So we go, so we set the, the year to 2020, month to February and the day to 29 and test that this works. And now we have actually tested all the, all the valid classes uh, for month, day and year. And next we go after the the IV, the invalid classes. And for the invalid classes, it's important that we only test one invalid class at a time. Because if we test several and we get an error message or the entire system crashes or, or something unexpected happens, then we do not know what is the reason for that. So if we would set, you know, month to zero, day to zero and year to minus one and the system crashes, so now we have no idea which of these three variables uh, caused the system to crash. So first we go uh, after D1. So we set this to, uh, we go to the zero, one boundary and the invalid value is zero. And we set everything else to valid. So zero for the day, one for the month and 2020 for the year. And we find out that the result is somewhat not okay. 
in our exploratory part that we did previously, we found that it actually uh, does not accept this zero month, but sets it to the, to the date uh, that the user was in without informing the user. And now we continue, we do the same for the, for the month. Uh, we set the month to zero, day to one, and year to 2020, and we figure that this is not okay. Okay, so to keep this video uh, relatively short, I will not go after the remaining invalid cases. Uh, however, there is an addition I made to the table, so we also, uh, to this condition table, is also good to, to document the test case number that covers this to ensure that there is at least one test case that, that covers. So we can see that we are still missing uh, M4, D4, D6, D8, D10, uh, Y1 and Y4. So we would just continue by adding test cases until we have uh, covered the entire condition table. As you can notice, going from the condition table to the test cases, can be a bit laborious, and there is actually some automated ways to do it. They are not covered in this course, but they are something that, if you are doing this seriously for the industry, they are something you should definitely look into more. So from combination table, uh, which is uh, this table here, uh, the test cases can be automatically generated. So there is no need especially to do this manual work. However, we are not going to practice it in this course because the, the tooling requires a, a setup and it's sort of it's covered in the uh, advanced testing course later. So, uh, however, this is possible. You can also ensure that the combinations uh, of different elements are tested, so-called pair pair coverage. And if you are interested, you can look articles on combinatorial testing. I think the article on NIST. Um, page is quite good. And if you are interested in tools, well, you can just, just Google them. So combinatorial testing tools. Uh, I have used Hexavice, ACTS and PICT. And those are all quite good. But I also think that the Jenny and IBM tool will probably be fine as well. Fine as well. But this is an extra material and not required for this course.